breath. I'm trying to get this one. <laughs> Phew. Okay. <laughs> Thank goodness. I was, we had trouble putting that up before the show started, but thank goodness I got it together. Um, welcome to Living Figuratively with your host, Judy Takas. This is a show that asks the question, why not fill your home with the fascinating faces and figures of people you don't even know? Why not fill your home with figurative art? Um, today we're going to kick off a three-part episode called Bed, Bath, and Beyond. And today, I welcome you to the master bedroom with the first episode, Bed, where I'm going to look at the art that I have in the bedroom, which is chock full of figurative art. And I'll take you on a little three-hour tour, maybe not three hours, maybe more like 15-minute tour of the, um, of the master bedroom. All right. First thing we're gonna do, I want to take a big look at this is kind of the the main centerpiece of the the master bedroom is the bed um, and the bed nook. We uh, when we built this house ten years ago, I envisioned I grew up always wanting a canopy bed. That's always been my fantasy, but kind of you know didn't didn't make sense. But I did love this whole idea of a bed nook. So. We, since we were building it, we decided to do that. Um, one of the, the cornerstones of the bed nook is that big gingerbread trellis up there that I found once upon a time at an antique fair, way before we even knew we were gonna build the house. Um, and I just fell in love with it, and I thought, you know, I'm gonna work this into my life somehow. So I bought it. And it has what I like to call the patina of life. Um, some people call that shabby chic, but I prefer the term patina of life just because it's a word, a term that I made up. So I like it better. Um, since we did this, this building it in, and we, you know, I got a couple extra little corner corbels to, to fit into there. Um, we pretty much designed everything around having the, that uh, gingerbread as the main thing. And with these two little outcroppings that we have up there, there was room to put art there. So what I decided to do was basically paint my feet and my husband's feet um, on each on our side, side of the bed. Partially because I love painting feet and I wanted to do something a little bit not quite traditional on it. So I didn't want to do like angels or cherubs or anything like that. Um, so I did the feet. Then, we wanted to fill the space with sort of a sense of symmetry um, as far as putting the art together. So at the time, which was 10 years ago, I was doing a lot of these head and shoulders pieces. I painted a self-portrait of myself back then when I had longer hair, um, and then one of my husband, and those are 24 by 24, we stuck them up there, that was kind of a no-brainer, very easy, you know, easy placement there. Then we continued with the symmetry, and I have these two gorgeous, gorgeous pieces by Jen Marie Zelesnak, who is a formerly a Cleveland artist. She is out west now, and um, they are not figurative. Well, they're not human figurative. They're actually hummingbird figurative, which I love. I love the way that she paints these hummingbirds. Um, one of the things that I always think is really difficult is to paint animals well. And for that reason, I generally don't gravitate towards animal paintings because so few people do it so well. Um, when I discovered Jen Marie's work, I thought, you know, it's like, it's sophisticated, it's contemporary, it's simple. She's got these patterns there, which, I think these have something to do with the stars, um, like star configurations, uh, and I'm not actually positive, and I should have probably researched that a little bit better, but um, I thought they were absolutely gorgeous. And I, um, I bought them from the uh, Lakeland Community College woman show that Mary Urbis curates every single year. In fact, I bought 
you know, these ones from that show. And then also this beauty right here by Annie Peters. Um, I got that, I believe, at a different uh, Lakeland Woman show. And um, basically for this one, we wanted to fill these tiny spaces that we have. I've got this little tiny space here. And um, when my husband and I both went to the show and I actually had a painting in it too, we both just gravitated toward this and, and fell in love with it and just, you know, thought yeah, that it made sense. It's called Empty Nest. And um, at the time we were facing an empty nest because my uh, son, my youngest one, my cameraman right now, who's behind the camera, was heading off to college and that was going to be, that was going to be it. We we're going to have the empty nest. Luckily right now we have a nice little full nest because everybody's home for, you know, the Corona times. Um, one of the good things about it. But at the time, this, this painting, uh, this actually multimedia piece really spoke to us. And we never had a multimedia piece before, so it really just kind of clicked. Now, one of the things that we needed to do, because we've got the symmetry thing going on, I've got this little strip with Annie Peters' beautiful work in it. We needed to find something for panning over to the other symmetrical strip right here. Something similar size and scale, something also three-dimensional, something also with a multimedia look to it. Uh, this piece right here, we actually found at um, Chautauqua Institution at the Fowler Kellogg Gallery, which is their um, art center, basically, and once again, my husband and I both gravitated towards this the this piece, and we, you know, we said, "Are you thinking what I'm thinking?" Because I told him that I was looking for something symmetrical to, you know, go with Annie's, and we were both thinking the same thing. So, this is uh, this is a uh, ceramic piece by April Felipe, and she's a New York and Ohio artist who, um, the, it's like. I love the detail on it. I love the drawing quality. Even though it's a ceramic, there's a drawing aspect to it. I love the, you know, this cluster of these amazing little flowers. And then it's also a piece of figurative art with the fingers coming out. So that, uh, that was a perfect, perfect counterpoint to balance the, the symmetry for our little bed nook over here. All right, let's, let's move on over. Move on over. One of the things I did over here is um, more curated clutter. If you remember that as another one of my terms from a couple of weeks ago. Um, I've got all the patina of life, you know, white architectural elements peppered around there. And my, uh, I have a pastel painting up there and they are called pastel paintings. Judy Carducci calls them that and she's the master of pastel paintings. But this one is one of mine one of my favorite models who I have um, painted for years and years. And I thought instead of taking up wall space with it, I thought I would curate it into my curated clutter. So we'll keep moving along. Here's a little corner that looks like one might want to snuggle up and read a book and, you know, in the bedroom and, and have sort of these, one of these cozy, quiet bedroom kind of times. Um, I'm ashamed to say I've never actually done that in this chair, in this corner, in the bedroom. I don't like sit and meditate in the bedroom or anything. Usually I'm getting ready to get out of there or heading back in and, you know, getting ready to jump in bed. But it sure looks like you could do that, huh? And the centerpiece for this particular corner is this painting called Air. Um, this is a painting of uh, the model that I painted for this one. It is very, it's, she's the first Wiccan that I ever met. She practices Wicca, which, because I asked her all about it, because I was, I was super fascinated. Um, and it's basically, it's got nothing to do with witch, witchcraft or Satanism or the occult or anything like that. It's really more um, embracing embracing nature, embracing the, the natural world, and, um, and respecting it, essentially. Uh, one of my favorite philosophies from Wicca that, that um, you know, she told me about 
is the concept where what you put out into the world gets comes back to you three times over. So if you put out good into the world, three times as much comes back to you. If you put out bad into the world, three times as much comes back to you. And I really, I really like that. It's kind of a zooped up version of karma. And um, I, I just like that as a, as a basic philosophy for living, regardless of whether you believe in Wicca or whatever, whatever your belief system is. So I really like that. And um, to me, for me, looking at this painting, like I loved doing her tattoo. That was actually the first time I ever did a tattoo. And she had these gorgeous feather earrings that just went perfectly, perfectly with the tattoo. Uh, the whole painting to me just fills me with calm. It, it's kind of like a sort of a, a blast of calm before I start my hyper day. Because uh, I always, you know, have a hyper day. But it, it really is kind of a blast of calm to look at before you, before you kick it off. All right. Now we're going to head on over. Head on over to the other part. More curated. Oh, whoa, whoa. Don't want to skip over this one. This one right here. This little beauty is um, a figure study that I did on one of my son's scribbly paintings from when he was like two or three years old. And um, one of the things that, that I thought was very fun about it is when he was a kid, I would always ask him, tell me about it, tell me about the painting. And sometimes if I had my act together and I had a marker, I would write right onto the drawing what it was that he said because you know, it's just a fun thing. So he always started with, whenever he told me about it, he always started with, and about it, and I'll read you what he said. It's, it's a little bit faded. I might re, you know, reinforce the writing, but this is what he said. He said, and about it, someone was sleeping and she got woke up with all of that screaming and she was little, like this tiny, and I could picture his little fingers going, this tiny, and she was sleeping right down here, all the way down here. And this is what he pointed to, right here, this point where, where she was sleeping. So I decided to immortalize this ephemera. And um, I sealed the drawing with acrylic matte medium because when you paint oil on paper, it can degrade unless the paper is sealed. So I sealed the paper before I, before I did the oil painting on it. And I loved it so much that then I framed it or I matted it with more gesture drawings so there was a little, little bit more of a scribbly thing going on and then I framed that up and this one I'm keeping I'm not selling it because it's got his cute little writing on it and this is the one that you know just graduated from University of Michigan all right oh I'm gonna go over here okay more curated clutter with the centerpiece of another uh, charcoal drawing from a life drawing group from years and years ago. And then I've got these two pieces, which actually can't date all the way back to art school. This is one of my favorite serene, beautiful, tall models who um, we only painted her a couple times in art school, but I just loved, love, love painting her. And I don't even know her name and it was 40 years ago, but I framed both these up. This is when I was doing oil on gessoed board and doing a lot of the Burt Silverman kind of um, breaking the rules of watercolor concepts, which I'll tell you about that on book day because there will be a book day. Um, but so I framed these up and they are serene and sleepy and work perfectly in the bedroom. Which brings us to the piece de resistance, kind of the my one of my favorite paintings that I own that is not one of my own, um, this beauty by Daniel Sprick. Daniel Sprick is one of my art, art heroes. And um, I will tell you a little bit about how I even discovered, not that he needed discovering, but how I discovered Daniel Sprick. Back about maybe 10, probably 10 years ago, 10 years ago, before Facebook really took off, before I really did a lot of stuff on the internet, um, I was coming back to painting after baby making and um, a graphic design and illustration career and I was coming back to painting full time and I've always liked painting people. I've always liked painting figuratively like I've never veered from that. 
Um, and at the time, I just didn't know who the good living figurative artists were. You never heard of them. Like you didn't, they weren't out in the public eye. Occasionally you'd see like a good one in the magazine, but you just, you know, they were just hard to, hard to find, unlike now. Uh, and when I got on Facebook, I kind of started seeing that there actually was a whole world full of really good figurative artists out there. It's just they're not clustered in one place. I mean, there's, you know, certain centers. There's New York and London and, and uh, Philadelphia has some good ones um, and L.A. But um, one of the painters that I discovered in that, in that sort of second time coming back to painting time was Daniel Sprick. And at the time, I was doing a lot of these head and shoulders paintings, like the ones over our bed. You wanna show, to remind people, like the ones over the, the bed like that. Um, and when I saw Daniel Sprick's work, somebody had posted like maybe 10 of his, 10 of his pieces. I was, it, it was like a real game changer for me because up until that point, I was feeling like, you know, I'm, I love painting, I'm having a great time with it, I, I feel like I'm doing a good job. And you know, like you're thinking, hey, I'm kind of all that in a bag of chips, but you know that there's like something missing. You know that there's other steps that you can take, but you just don't know where and how. And when I saw his work, it kind of like clicked in where I suddenly saw where I could be going with my realism. And and I went back and I reworked a whole bunch of paintings with this sort of game changer mindset. And they came out so, so, so much better. It was really, really pretty amazing. Um, I'm nowhere near at his, at his level, but they really took me from, I'm gonna say, from a four to a six, maybe even a seven. And, um, and I look back at the photos of those paintings before I reworked them, and wonder how I could have thought they were good because really they were just kind of bad. Um, so that's why Daniel Sprick is like kind of a major game changer for me. Uh, a couple of years ago, he had a show at the uh, Denver Art Museum in Denver, Denver, Colorado. And I really badly wanted to go, so we made a family trip out of it. We went to, we went to um, Colorado, we went hiking, we went to you know, hiking some, art some, hiking in art. It was, it was really awesome. This is the, uh, the book from the, the catalog from the, from the show. The show was called Fictions. And I went back to the show many times and spent many hours looking at his, at his work. And this painting right here, Laurel, Laurel, Laurel Lauren standing was in that show. And now I'm very fortunate that it's in my, in my bedroom. The things that I loved about it, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit, get a little bit closer. So one of the things that I loved about it and why I gravitated towards it was that um, at the time and now I was painting chicks with balls, which are truthful, realistic depictions of women, older women, women of different ages, women of different body types. And this really spoke to me because she is she is painted so beautifully and she's not 25 year old smooth and you know voluptuous um and just the the i love how he did the glasses i love how he did the blue light on here she he's uh presented at the portrait society and he's given away the secret of how he gets that blue light but if you want to find out you have to take a workshop with him because i'm not going to give it away here um i love the the clear, the yellow, airy, airy background. And um, I love how it's, it looks like paint and it looks like life. And it looks like life and it looks like paint. And it really just, it just, this painting just totally clicked in. And the reason that I keep it in the bedroom is not because of modesty or anything like that. It's because on the wonderful days where I get to sleep until there's like light in the room where it's, I'm not just getting up in the dark. It's really nice to just be able to lay there, look over at a great painting and let it kind of burn into your soul as you start your painting day. So that's why I'm thrilled to have this beautiful piece by Daniel Sprick in my home, in my bedroom. So 
Thank you all for joining me tonight. Um, remember any of the paintings of mine that are for sale and available are on my online shop on my website and um, judytakas.com. And as always, I will be pay paying forward 50% of each art sale into the struggling art community right now, because even as different places are waking up and starting to go back to back to business, many artists are super struggling um, because, you know, art's always the last thing, last thing that people, people want to support when, you know, things are tight. So um, be sure to join me next week for Bed Bath and Beyond, where next week we will be seeing a man about a horse, we'll be powdering our noses, and we'll be dropping off our kids at the pool, because next week we'll be going to the bathroom. All right, same bad time, same bad channel, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here uh, on Thursdays, the on Thursdays. Uh, join me for Living Figuratively. Welcome back now, you hear?